Former President Donald Trump is a bit salty over reports that his rallies just seem to not draw the big crowds anymore. There's, it's the, the, gone are the days that he was filling stadiums and really kind of back to the times, just, you know, pretty much after he had been paying people to go to his rallies. Uh, in fact, there was a Trump rally that happened in Georgia on Saturday, which uh, brought in some pretty low numbers, very sad, even leading to people like Eric Erickson, redundant name aside, making a good point, tweeting this out. The Trump turnout on a Saturday in Georgia was anemic. Ooh, anemic. Uh, that does not bode well for his slate of candidates. Of course, he was there trying to prop up people that are challenging the current governor, Brian Kemp. Uh, now, he said, this is Eric Erickson's tweet still, pointing out that not all the people there from, were from Georgia or even able to vote. And Purdue and the other candidates had to foot the bill. Oof. Referencing, of course, uh, David Purdue. So David Purdue is insane. <laughs> uh, a crazy, crazy far right winger. Uh, and Donald Trump, of course, there. Uh, also there, Marjorie Taylor Greene. But anyway. Now, the former president's uh, chief spokeswoman, however, uh, was not happy about this. I'll, I'll get to her quote uh, later, specifically responding to Eric Erickson's tweet. Uh, but first, a couple more fun comments. Greg Bluestein, a political reporter at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, said this, I've covered more than two dozen Trump rallies around the nation. This is the smallest crowd I've seen at a rally of his in Georgia since he won the 2016 election significantly smaller than the crowd in Perry in September. Significantly smaller, very, very tiny, very, very small, very small. Almost, you know, beta, very, very, very small. <clears throat> I'm just saying, uh, tighten up my meat. I like my meat tight. I'm okay. All right. Fun. <laughs> uh, puns aside, <laughs> let's go to more. Um, in fact, oh, I'm sorry, this is more, uh, this is Stephen uh, Fowler now, a reporter at Georgia Public Broadcasting, saying this, it's almost time for Trump to speak here in Georgia, and there's probably no more than 5,000 people, the smallest Trump rally I've ever covered here. And then he goes on as well to make the comparison to Perry uh, in 2021, which was closer to 10,000, and nowhere close to 2020s, 20 to 30,000 strong rallies. So understand that there has been a tapering off of interest in going to Trump rallies with the Republicans. In fact, here's what he said, and this is devastating. People kept leaving during Trump's speech. It's cold and windy, and there's not much enthusiasm. And then shared a couple of photos as well uh, of some empty stands. I'm going to show you that. So uh, there's one. Looks like at least for that back row, more porta potties than people. Fun. Uh, and of course, whatever conclusion you want to draw from that, <laughs> the more, uh, you know, more toilets than people. Fun. The enthusiasm has gone limp. Thank you uh, for our mod here at Splume 85 for that comment. Uh, that's hilarious. All right, next picture here. <laughs> All right, hey, we're looking a little bit better now. All right. So, still, not very good. Not very big. <laughs> very, very small. Very sad. A little limp. Mm. Mm. So now, his team pushed back. As I mentioned, Liz Harrington went after Eric Erickson in response to his tweet. She says, 25K to 35K is anemic fake news. Yeah, you know, she's right. A 25 to 35K would not have been anemic. It's just too bad they didn't get near those numbers. <laughs> now, uh, Trump himself trotted out that argument that the media is refusing to show the large, large crowds, as he has done before, uh, because, of course, his statement, which is, uh, funny enough, not put in Truth Social. It wasn't, it wasn't Truth Doubt. Is that what they call them? They call them truths, but what happens when you, when you, when you, you know, 
put it out there. Is it is it a truth out? Is that what it is? Did you truth it out? Or I don't know. I, I don't understand the, the whole true social thing. But nonetheless, this was not on true social. This was a prepared statement. And it said this. We had a massive crowd last night in Georgia. But as usual, the fake news media absolutely refuses to show it. People are estimating 25,000 to 35,000 people. But our record so far is Texas with 87,000 people with 50,000 being turned away. This is really fun. Okay, but the, you're talking about the other places that, and yes, by the way, Trump had gotten large crowds before. Nobody's disputing that, that he has had large crowds turn out before. But we're not talking about before. We're talking about what's going on now, what happened in Georgia on Saturday. Not very many. But hey, look, uh, talking about fun, right? Yes, it must be very fun just lying your ass off all the time because he literally cannot do it about the most ridiculous things nobody cares about the crowd size nobody cares honestly the only reason i'm talking about it is because he's butthurt about it that's that's the only interest that i garner from the story is the fact that he's so so upset so upset over this uh his feelings very very hurt the fifis um Donald Trump's the complete baby. And so here's the thing. Here's the reason that the people aren't turning out. They're bored. Even his own followers are bored because they hear the same thing. And that same thing, of course, is the reiteration of, I didn't lose the 2020 election. I won. I won bigly. Uh, I didn't lose. That's what losers do. Donald Trump is not a loser. It was stolen from me. Election fraud. Here's what he said. Here's an actual quote. The truth is, I ran twice, I won twice, and I did much better the second time. Yeah, okay, yes, you did better the second time than you did the first time. You actually did get more votes than you did the, the time before. It just so happens that Joe Biden got more votes than you. So getting more votes than you did before, hey, oh, wow, look at that, I got more votes than I did before. Okay, and you still lost because the other person got more votes than you. About 7 million more. Uh, and it, by the way, he got them in key places because the last time Hillary Clinton got more votes, 3 million more, but not in the places that, that mattered thanks to our electoral college system. This time, Trump lost in the places, uh, and, and I hate saying the places that matter. Uh, it just, it, in our system, it's messed up. It's not a direct democracy, and so you have this electoral college. You, you know the story, right? I shouldn't have to go over that again. And he got less electoral college votes than Joe Biden. Simple as that. Sad. But here's what he said. To cap it off, we may just have to do it again. So, look, uh, hinting at running again, of course, I think we already know that he's planning on running again. Or at least talking about it to continue, you know, getting attention for it. But again, I don't think people really care. I don't think people care at all. Uh, in fact, a recent um, political consult survey found, and, and again, going back to the reason they don't care is because he keeps talking about the election and not about the current issues. 64% of Americans believe that uh, the Republican Party should just move on from the 2020 election. That's it. Quinnipiac also released a poll last month finding that 52% of Republicans said they agree with Vice President, former Vice President Mike Pence over Trump on the former being able to overturn the election last January. And so, look, they're like, move on. No, you can't overturn the election. Move on already. Let's go. Let's go. Search uh, interest and phrases on uh, social media as well as like, you know, uh, Google searches and things like that. For phrases like election fraud have trended downward. Nobody cares. In fact, here's Charlie Black, a longtime Republican lobbyist, telling NBC News recently that said, quote, except for a small group, Republican voters don't care about 2020 anymore. If you look at Trump's polling among Republicans, it's all been going down uh, all year. And the more he rants and raves about the election being stolen, the more it'll keep going down. If you didn't want to run again, 
He's got to shut that up and start talking about the future, but he's not. And look, he doesn't even have to start talking about the future. What he could do is just focus on the present. And trust me, I'm not trying to give him advice or anything like that. Um, but like, okay, why not talk about what's going on right now? There's all sorts of different issues, okay? Um, I mean, back to that same morning consult poll that I referenced earlier. Two-thirds of Americans said to believe that things in the country had pretty seriously gotten off on the wrong track. So that's two-thirds. I mean, that's a pretty sizable amount of people that are like, eh, things aren't going so great under Democrats, right? People are concerned with inflation, corporate greed, just everyday dinner, you know, kitchen table issues that have not been addressed by the Democratic Party. And so they don't give two shits about an old dude's ego when it takes a hundred bucks to fill up their truck because some corporate asshat decided he wanted another yacht. And now, if Donald Trump talked about those things, there would be more excitement. He would be doing better. And by the way, when he does, he does actually do, you know, talk about those things sometimes, but always references, if I had been president still, and I am still president because I didn't lose the election, well, then immediately people turn right off because it's like, oh, here we go. He's talking about the election again. No, you, you got to have a consistent message, right? And again, it's not that Republicans wouldn't vote for Donald Trump if he did win the nomination. Yeah, they, they'd still vote for him because, once again, they believe that Democrats are evil. They're just not showing up for him anymore. They're just not excited about him anymore. And so they're bored. They're just bored. But Trump is obsessed with his ego. He's not going to let go. The, the guy is pure id. It's impossible for him to give up on this narrative because then that would mean that he admits that he lost. And, well, if you admit that you lose, what does that make you? Who makes you a loser? I'm not a loser. I, I, I didn't lose. I couldn't have lost. His brain can't handle it. It just implodes. Now, there's a good and bad thing to this, to wrap it up. Now, the good thing is that it looks like he's going to keep fading himself into irrelevance, or, I'm sorry, irrelevance, due to this absolute obsession with the election. And again, if he becomes the nominee, there's just not going to be as much excitement on the Republican side. Not enough diehard supporters, and Biden might squeak through again. Now, the bad, well, the bad could be really bad for the country. Now, he could lose, uh, Trump could lose so much influence within the party that you have somebody else who has adopted the ideas that made Trump win the first time. A little fake populism, sounding a bit like a regular person. The, the, there are people that are just obsessed with the idea of like, oh, you don't understand, uh, I really like this politician because I, I can have a beer with him because he sounds like a regular person. Well, that's the one thing Donald Trump did right. He sounds like a regular person, but at the same time, he also says insane things. So, but doing that fake uh, populism. But the thing is, he'll, you know, just like Donald Trump did, have everything he said drip with racism and xenophobia and hatred. But at the same time, be savvy, right? Be savvy enough to take over the Republican Party and, uh, you know, run his campaign in a way that could be a very uh, weak Biden on the domestic front. And so, again, you have a smart person that uses all the things that Donald Trump did to get into power and leaves out the bad things that didn't work, i.e. not obsessed with his own ego, but wants to get power, but does it in a smart way. You see what I mean? And, and I think you know the kind of person I'm talking about, somebody like a Tucker Carlson. And so that's the nightmare scenario.